React Native finally has some competition, and it's not a side project by some university student. It is made by ByteDance, the digital giant behind TikTok. Right away, we can see that Lynx is a real competitor to React Native. Being used in TikTok, such a large-scale app, while remaining native performance and native feel, is an insane metric. Ship native at scale and velocity. I think this paragraph is like a dirty little callout to the React Native team, because the problem with React Native when it comes to shipping apps on Android or iOS is that no matter what you do, it feels like the style of UI that you're shipping the app with is like a 2018 material theme. And it is so, so unnecessarily difficult to make things feel native, to make UI feel native. Reading through this article, it seems that there might be no reason to use React Native anymore. Lynx is trying to solve the issues that React Native promised us for like three years now. Let's keep reading. Craft designs with markups and CSS as usual. Okay, this is big. I don't want to be using whatever the fuck React React Native has implemented right now for styling because it does not feel good. It, it completely does not feel good. It is so limiting. You have to reinvent so many things and just not a good experience overall. At its core, UI technologies exist to deliver exceptional product design. Links natively support CSS animations and transitions, CSS selectors, variables for theming, modern CSS visual effects like gradients, clipping, and masking, all designed to unlock the creativity of the web community to achieve trending design engineering. This is actually big. This is the type of things that I want to be using for styling, right? I'm just so used to CSS. It is much easier. There's so many more resources on CSS than there is on styling React Native components. One. Two, really funny. You know what's really funny? Gradients. You know what doesn't support gradients? Firefox, the like primarily web thing. Okay, and over here, we can see that this is the this is the TSX that Lynx uses. And we have the styling, which uses CSS, as always. On web, it looks... I can't tell what, what, what this little thing is. Um, yeah, I can't tell what that is. Font difference, I think. Oh, Lynx Explorer. So they're doing a similar thing to to the to what React Native is doing right now. That's interesting. Use the main thread responsibly for interactivity. Okay, this is very big. The problem with React Native that we have right now is first of all performance, second of all JS bridge, but um, primarily it is the fact that it's single threaded, which means that right now in React Native. You either have a performant application or you can see the bottlenecks in the UI, which is not a good user experience. One of the link's most notable architectural decisions is its statically enforced division of user scripting into two distinct runtimes. Finally, fucking finally, a main thread runtime powered by PrimJS. JS Bridge is gone. JS Bridge is gone. We're, we're good. JS Bridge is gone. So it's a custom lightweight high performance JavaScript engine specifically for Lynx cross-platform framework. Supporting ES 2019, uh -huh, build on top of CreateJS. We can't stop winning. It is the, the era of Chinese internet. The, the, the Chinese just can't stop winning. ByteDance, I love you. Sorry chat, I think my, my camera typed out. A custom JavaScript engine specifically built for Lynx, uh, dedicated in the privilege, la 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 la. Synchronous UI tasks like initial, initial launch and high priority event handling and background runtime as the default for user code, ensuring the main thread remains low workload and non blocking. Okay, as I mentioned before, the problem with React Native right now is that if you if your code is bottlenecking your app, you can see that in the UI. Like it either freezes or the UI just like completely becomes unresponsive. And it is terrible. And Lynx is here to fix this issue. This enables two killer features of Lynx. Instant first frame rendering. We can't stop winning. We can't stop winning. We just can't stop winning. Backed by usability research. If rendering is fast enough, and Lynx is, no special intermediate feedback is needed. By briefly blocking the main thread until the first frame is fully rendered, Lynx eliminates blank screens, creating a perceived instant experience. This is big. This is like the just the gains that you get from switching frameworks. It is crazy good. And we also get main thread scripting, a small statically scheduled piece of code privileged to run on the main thread, handles high priority events and gestures. Finally, making it ideal for implementing silky smooth, highly responsive interfaces that feel native. Once again, problem with React Native is that unless you're using something like Swift, you do not have smooth gestures. Gestures just suck. It is the same way as if you were just launching a browser and you have an app within the browser that uses gestures for mobile, that is impossible. Okay, for everybody who doesn't know what the problem is here, is that it is 
barely impossible to make gestures actually feel good within React Native. And if you don't believe me, go on YouTube, in Safari, in your browser, on your phone, open up shorts and try to scroll through shorts on YouTube or try to scroll through Instagram Reels on YouTube. This is how it feels to use gestures within React Native. It just is it's such a terrible experience. And so here we have the first frame rendering, which let's see, looks pretty smooth. It just, it just freezes the app with this logo, right? And then as soon as everything is rendered, it just unblocks with the first frame being fully ready. This is awesome. This is the type of user experience tricks that you want to implement. And then we also have a main thread scripting in here in slow-mo. So let's see. It's all right. It's so, it's so much better. It's so much better than what we have in React Native right now. We've seen services migrating from web to links often achieve a two to four times reduction in launch times across the board. This is very big. Uh, our in-house benchmarks also show that links consistently launched faster on Android while remaining competitive with similar technologies on iOS. This is good. This is awesome. Open sourcing links. So it was originally developed by engineering team at ByteDance. Uh, TikTok uses it, blah, 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 Offering support in several areas, including funding, technical enhancement, whatever. Cross-platform technologies, democratize cross-platform technologies. We're open sourcing React links, React on links, as Link's initial front-end framework flavor. Bro, Link's one, Link's one. If you're able to write front-ends for apps that are performant, that feel native with two threads, using something like Vue, like Svelte, like things that I personally like writing instead of React, Link's just one, completely, like absolutely one. Nobody ever will use React native. Not only are you able to use Link's with React, you're also able to use Link's with other frameworks. This is very big. This means that Link's will get developer adoption five times as quick as React Native did initially. And you know what that means. Languages don't win based on how performant they are. They don't win based on how good their syntax is, based on how, how good their standard library is. How languages really win is that one, they have good developer tools, two, they have a good developer experience and everything comes later. If you don't have those two, no matter how good your language is, no matter how performant it is, no matter how good it is to write, if you don't have something like a package manager, if you don't have a pro proper linter, if you don't have a proper testing tool, nobody's gonna use it. It's just how, how, how software engineering is. But here we can see that links is being put out right away with different flavors that you can use on links, very big. RSpeed, which is a Rust, Rust based toolchain that is built on top of uh, RS pack to enable fast builds and pave the way for a multi framework micro front end. Future via module federation. This is very big. Rust, I don't know why, but it seems that Rust is terrible at compiling its own code. Like it's really, really slow. But when it comes to compiling other things, it is insanely fast. I think I think Turbo Pack uses Rust. Yeah, Turbo Pack uses Rust. I'm pretty sure Angular also added Rust. Oh. This copycat guy actually made a video on how on how Rust is being used within Angular. Who is this guy? Okay. <laughs> Here's the interesting part. Not only is the core engine of Link's, Link's framework agnostic, it is also agnostic to host platforms and rendering backends. Drawing inspiration from a spectrum of projects like Chromium, Flutter, and React Native, it's designed to adapt to new platform primitives, and it's flexible enough to switch to a custom renderer, enabling pixel-perfect, consistent rendering across any platforms with a graphics interface. With links for web, links can run even natively within the web browsers. Together, they give links ultimate flexibilities in how it can expand to even more platforms, such as desktop, TV, or IoT. This is an absolutely gigantic announcement for all of my unemployed web developers, because now they can pump out software for Amazon Fire TVs, I guess, or something. This is awesome. If the performance is as awesome as they say it is, and if they're going to add different flavors of web frameworks to links, I genuinely don't know why would anybody use React Native. Like aside from legacy code and aside from the amount of educational content that you have on React Native right now, I don't see why a developer with the presented choice of either you learn React Native or you learn links uh, would pick React Native. To be fair, at this point, I feel like I feel like there's the links one. There is, I mean, obviously it is really, really early to say that. We we'll, we'll also have to see how it writes, how the performance actually is in comparison to real world and not their benchmarks, even though it is being used in TikTok. But to be fair, I feel like if a developer was presented with a choice of either learning links or learning React Native, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't pick links. Like links just seems so good. It is performant, you have two threads that don't block the UI. The actual gestures work, which means that the primary way of using apps on a mobile handheld device, which is gestures and taps, is actually properly implemented for once. You don't have JS bridge. You, instead of that, you have PrimaJS. 
This is awesome. I and mean, you have Rust tooling, which is fast and probably builds like fast as fuck as well. This is not an end by a new beginning. Lynx is production ready and already powers an incredible number of businesses. What we're open sourcing today is the exact version we use in production, which is why it starts with the version 3. It even includes legacy code and APIs we intend to deprecate, but we believe in open sourcing what we actually rely on. In fact, we're moving all development to GitHub, making it open and transparent to the community. This is awesome. This is this is this is the era of the Chinese internet. They just can't stop winning. With DeepSeek, with Lynx, I think I think there's also one uh, another front-end framework that I saw being put out by China. It's called like ICE or something, but I, I don't remember what it's called. The entire GitHub documentation of it is actually in Chinese, so I'm not going to be able to pull it up. Right, this release marks only the beginning. What we're open sourcing today is not everything. Many peripherals that we're proud of, including additional UI components, advanced built-in graphics capabilities. Ooh, this is cool. This is cool. This is something that you're not able to do on React Native. You can only do it on Swift. Uh, I'm talking from a perspective of iOS developer, of course. The custom renderer and other frameworks are yet to come. More importantly, this is the beginning of the journey, because as a relatively young team in the open source space, we know that we have much to learn about working, collaborating, and growing with the community. But we are glad we took this step because we believe open source is the right path forward. To foster collaboration, push the boundaries of what's possible in cross-platform development, and give back to the community that has given us so much. We invite you to join us on the exciting journey and welcome your feedback and contributions. What will you build with Lynx? This is awesome. I genuinely feel like Lynx just won the race, even though the race just started. They won without even competing in it. The reason is Lynx is able to actually solve all of the issues that we have with React right now, or at least it claims that it does. So for example, JS Bridge, which is slow and basically bottlenecking the entire app, it's gone. Now we have PrimJS, and not only do we have a custom JavaScript runtime or JavaScript engine, we also have two threads to actually run all of our code in. This means that if you're doing some expensive and really performant function or calculation within the app, your UI doesn't freeze. Like you were able to run that on a background thread while having the UI responsive, which is, which is, which to me is insane. It is kind of insane to me that I have to say how crucial these things are. Finally, gestures, gestures that work and gestures that don't feel like shit. This is so much better. And don't get me started on all of the developer experience. The fact that you're able to use different flavors of links with different web frameworks, like Svelte, hopefully, Vue and Angular, maybe if you're a masochist, and a rest pack, a Rust build system. This this is this is extra cool. I think I think Lynx just won. to me, Lynx is finally setting a bar within the cross-platform mobile development scene that should have been set a long time ago. They're finally bringing a native feel to cross-platform gestures, different flavors of the web frameworks, a fast build system, finally fast load times, two separate threads. Tell me what you think about Lynx in the comments below. Is that the end of React Native? Is there still any point in learning it? Make sure to like and follow. I stream on Twitch and YouTube and I still have a lot more content to deliver on this channel. So follow along. Thank you.